What up, gang? It's your boy Zap back with another banger. And today, we get into a little bit of history, right? Genetics was born in the early 19th centuries in a monastery garden somewhere far, far away by a brother known as Gregor Mendel. And he came up with what we know today as the Mendelian inheritance, right? And the Mendelian inheritance is made up of three main laws. So today, we're going to break it down, chop it up a little bit, and get a little further into it, man. With no further ado. Get it! Wow. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you heard me? Yeah, you know it. Keep on your knees. We get some sand and smoke the sides of genetics. Oh, how high. Give credit to Zaza. Genetics. Genetics. So Mendel, or Gregor Mendel, he pretty much discovered everything in the majority that we all know about genetics uh, today. Uh, he he kind of opened the door for people after him to discover more, but. Uh, what, what he discovered with thousands and thousands of experiments using garden peas in the monastery, um, it was groundbreaking and it opened the door, uh, which um, with those experiments, genetics were born. Um, he is responsible for mostly all the terms that you hear outside of um, anything non medallion right? When we think in terms of um f1 f2 f3 uh b right b and and, and he started his, his experiments in 1865 right 1865 so um this my brother little dude shout out to dooski little dude farms uh he brought something to my attention when we was in clubhouse running over mendel uh, last night and he was like dude think about 1865 it was no you know electricity so um, it really gave me a newfound respect because I really never um, thought about it from that perspective. You know, all of these thousands of breedings and pollinations and self-pollinations and outcrosses he's doing to um, to to understand. Right at, at, in the beginning, during that time, we thought genetics was really simple. Right, we thought it was what we know today as co uh, incomplete dominance. Right. Uh, we, 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 we thought everything was just a blend of two parents. So we thought, uh, for example, if a, if a red flower bred with a white flower, it would make a pink flower, right? And that was the consensus and understanding of what we all thought in biology back then. Everybody thought it was just a blend. Um, and Mendel, Gregor, he wanted to challenge that. He he didn't he be, he believed that it was much much more to it, and through these thousands of um, garden pea experiments, right, self pollinations and breedings and all of this, he termed and coined and and discovered all of these things that started everything in the birth of genetics. He um, his laws. Of inheritance. Mendelian inheritance consists of three main laws, right? It's the law of dominance and uniformity, the law of segregation, as well as the law of independent assortment. So when you think about those three, these are all relative to selective breeding and isolating segregating traits so he realized that um traits can actually be passed down and fixed from one generation to the next and they were being passed down from parent to progeny right um and as they were being observed he also noticed that you can actually isolate and segregate the traits so um that's what we think about the law of segregation Right. You can you can segregate traits in order to fix them in order to fix traits to go pass down. 
through the generations. And that is ultimately uh, where it all started. Now, we do have some non-Mendelian practices that came much you know, uh, later down the line after he opened the door and discovered all of the uh, information and, 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 and stuff that he, he discovered, uh, you know, there were, you know, biologists and scientists after him who, who now um, found new practices outside. So that's where incomplete dominance and, and, and uh, uh, co-dominance, you know, these different types of dominances come into play because they actually go outside of Mendelian's law. That's why alleles are so important, right? When it comes to inheritance, understanding alleles, because inheritance is acquiring genetic characteristics or traits um, from from parents to to the offspring, uh, human, plants, whatever. Um, the parent, each parent, is gonna offer two alleles, and and as he's conducting these uh, experiments. First thing he discovered was mono, monohybrid, right? Monohybrid inheritance. Mono, uh, uh, Mendel crossbred a pure tall plant and a pure short plant, which produced the first generation of pea plants. All of the plants in the first generation were tall plants. He called this generation the F1. And the F1 generation and the offspring were named F1 progeny. Then he crossbred the tall plants of the F1 generation to produce the F2 generation, where... He basically observed that the F2 generation has some short plants as well. And, and the ratio of the tall plants to the short plants in the F2 generation was roughly 3 to 1. He theorized that the short traits were actually present, though they weren't being expressed. And due to the tall trait being dominant over the recessive trait. So that's kind of... Um, and this is where he discovered dominant and recessive through the mono, mono hybrid inheritance. Right, he was able to determine that the traits were still there in the F1 generation. They just weren't showing up. They only showed up and expressed themselves in the F2 generation. This is why I always tell you. You can only F2 and F1 is very important. You can, you need those in order to create your inbred line. You need those. You need both of those highly because one is going to give you one population and one look and another is going to give you another population and a whole different look. Mendel just, he discovered that in 1865. That's old news, man. It's old news. You just need to study a population with a nice, strong look. Take your time. Be patient. Start, start small. You don't have to go with 10,000 plants. Pheno hunt, you, you know, you got to build that up. You know, you, you got to build those skills, that eye over time, over years, gradually. It's not going to, you just don't jump in front of 500 plants and know how to selectively hunt. That's not how it goes. So when you hear these people always just throwing that out there, oh, man, you, you need to have 10,000 plants. They can't even do it. They never even stood in front of that many plants and, and, and actually needed to select or isolate traits, not just look at them. But actually, go in there with purpose to isolate traits. And it's not easy. So start off small. 10 plants, 20 plants, whatever, you know, you're comfortable with. And then gradually you can move that number up. But the, 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 the most important thing is that you grasp the concept. And you can grasp the concept on a small level. You don't need a billion plants to do that, man. So um, when people always ask how much space do you need, you know, you need as much space as you can handle because not everybody can select in front of that many plants, man. It's just, they don't even know what they're doing man, most of the time. So um, keep that in mind as well. And don't always listen to the know-it-alls, right? Everybody know it all, but little do they know. So anyway, moving on. Yeah, so the monohybrid cross, that's where he kind of discovered um, you know, but, but with single traits, right? That's just, um, like you said, a short plant versus a tall plant. Those are just individual traits. He was able to discover that in the F1 generation, all of them was tall. But when he inbred them, he started seeing short plants. And he's like, wow, man. So 
I'm, I'm starting to think that that's actually already there in the F1. It's just not going to come out. It's not going to express itself ever. And he was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. And so he, he was able to, I mean, he, he did everything. That's why when you, when you want to learn this thing, you need to go back and, 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 and study, um, you know, Mendel's law of, of inheritance and his three laws, you know, the law of dominance and seg uh, segregation, you know, the law of inheritance and the law of independent assortment. Those are, those are the three laws. And each of them uh, represent the practices and, 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 you know, that we need to do in order to uh, isolate traits and selectively breed successfully. Shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to all the subscribers, man. Make sure, um, you know, hit that like button, man. Show me some love. Hit that like button, gang. Go ahead. I'm going to give you a second, man. Hit that like button right now for your boy, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all, man. I don't take nothing, man. I don't take no bread or nothing, man. Just go ahead and hit that like button for me real quick. Go ahead, man. Do it real quick, man. All right, cool. Appreciate you. Oh, appreciate you. So, um, other than that, we locked in, man. ACinfinity.com. Make sure you use code TeamZaza at checkout. We got something new from AC Infinity, too. I'm going to bust that thing open on oh, hold. Yeah, I got to... Uh, I got to put it together, but shout out to AC Infinity and my sponsors, man. That's the partners over there, man. Much love. They always support Team Zaza and everything that I do, man. So shout out to AC Infinity. Make sure you visit acinfinity.com, gang. Straight up. Use code Team Zaza. Get you a discount while you're at it, man. And don't forget zazagenetics.com. I still got the coupon code running for Dead Ops, 50% off. Coupon code season four, man. So make sure you take advantage of that while it's up. And um, catch us in the Discord. You know what time it is. We in Discord. About to start opening up Clubhouse again. Get them Clubhouse classes going again, man. So, um, But right now, catch us in the Discord, 9 p.m. I'll be in class tonight, man. So much love to y'all, man. Other than that, keep it 100 with yourself, man. You hear me? Much love and respect. Treat people how you want to be treated, gang. You understand me? A little bit of empathy goes a long way, and we out of here. Kick, bow. I'm a little high. Give credit to Zaza. Genetics, genetics, genetics. All y'all niggas weak as pathetics. I don't know why you try to sell it. I'm smoking the strain. <laughs> it's killing my lungs, but damn, it's easing my brain. I'm losing control. My body's immune. It's all the same. Except for genetics, because they got the flame.